though. See, it's just like that. It wants to grab on. Don't do that to me. <laughs> Hey, this is Jessica from goodenoughandstuff.com. Let's make some Costco mini cakes. So my sister Rebecca used to make and sell awesome cakes many years ago. She made my wedding cake and our sister Victoria's too. She's really talented in all kinds of things, including singing, by the way. You should go check out her YouTube channel, Rebecca Tanner Music. I will leave a link in the description. She also happens to be an excellent teacher. So I asked her to show me the basics for how to decorate a cake. To save time and make it easy on ourselves, we're going to actually use Costco muffins as the actual cake. Rebecca's husband actually came up with the idea way back when Becca was selling cakes because she couldn't get the 4 inch top layer of the cake to work and she didn't have ingredients to make another. So Bill suggested using a Costco muffin and it worked perfectly and nobody noticed because they're so delicious and perfect. This is not sponsored, but Costco muffins are great because they have a really wide base, they're dense, moist, flavorful, and hold their shape well. We used pumpkin and blueberry, but you can use whatever kind you like. The chocolate chunk is delicious, but the chunks do kind of get in the way and tear the cake sometimes, so just be careful with those. Along with the muffins, you'll either need like a spinning cake plate, or, or you can just use some paper plates. You need piping tips. We used Wilton numbers 3, 10, 12, 21, and 32. Piping bags, some couplers, sprinkles, and candy to decorate. Either an offset spatula or a butter knife, a serrated knife, paper towels, plastic wrap, bowls and spoons for mixing frosting colors, scissors, food dye, cake filling if you want to do more than just frosting between the layers, and then a lot of buttercream. We made four batches of the Wilton Vanilla Buttercream for six muffins, but we probably only needed like two batches. It's always better to have too much than too little though, and you can freeze it if you have extra, or make cake balls with the extra frosting and muffin pieces. I'll leave a link to the frosting recipe down in the description. For just one batch, cream half a cup of shortening with half a cup of softened butter, then add four cups of powdered sugar, two tablespoons of milk, and one teaspoon of vanilla, then cream until totally combined. The frosting should be smooth and pretty easy to spread with not a lot of resistance, but it can still hold its shape. If it's too thick, it'll rip the cake when you try to spread it. You can also just go buy a tub of medium consistency cake frosting in the cake aisle at Walmart, but just make sure it says medium and not stiff consistency. Scoop some into individual bowls and mix in whatever colors you want. Make sure to leave some white if you need it for your design. I do want to mention while I'm mixing these colors that Becca has the skills to make these cakes perfect, but we only had about two hours to make and film all of them, so while they may not be up to her professional abilities and standards, they far exceed mine. So I encourage Becca to leave the cakes looking a little bit more rustic, that is usually her style. And they all still turned out so cute that we were both happy with them anyway. Make sure to keep the frosting covered with plastic wrap as you work so it doesn't dry out and form a crust. We had to make all the frosting the day before and stick it in the fridge so it was too cold and hard to work with at first. To thaw the frosting without melting it, put it in the microwave and press cook time for 30 seconds, then press power level 2, then start. Take it out, stir it really well, do 20 more seconds on power level 2, and then it should be the right consistency. Grab a muffin, pull off the paper, place it on either a spinning cake stand or an upside down plate. You just want something you can easily turn on the table. Using a long serrated knife, lightly score the cake just at the top of the straight sides all the way around and keep turning the cake as you cut deeper and deeper, just a little at a time until you get all the way through. If you just cut straight across, you end up ripping a chunk out of the opposite side. So this method helps you to make an even cut and keep the cake intact. Use the same method to cut the cake into two layers. Use something like a paper towel to flick the crumbs off the plate before you start frosting. Okay, if they want to just do the tip alone, you just put the tip in the bag, you kind of wiggle it down, mark sort of like halfway up the tip, kind of squeezy squeeze. Okay. Kind of halfway up the tip, huh? Yeah, kind of squeezy squeeze. That might be too far. Squeeze it back up, give it a little cut while you did that. Squeeze it down, that's, that's too far. Right. <laughs> 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 and we waste, we throw all the bag away. That's great. <laughs> See, whenever I do these things, I'm like, this is not how we usually do it. <laughs> okay. We put the tip in the bag. We push it down to the bottom. <laughs> really, I guess you really just go kind of where you only cut a lit. You kind of mark it near the very edge of the tip. I guess that's what I usually do. Push it back up, it's out of the way. And just cut kind of where you made that mark. Why is that water in there? <laughs> <laughs> and 
and just push it down. Perfect. There you go. You put this down in the bag and you just kind of mark sort of near the end of where the coupler is. Okay, push it back up. Make a cut there. Squeeze it down. Put a tip over. And then screw that on. Nice and tight. And there you have it. Perfect. To fill the piping bag, fold the edges down, then spoon the frosting in. Roll the edges back up, squish the frosting down to the tip, then twist the bag at the top of the frosting. Squeeze the frosting out with even pressure, making sure to hold the twist in the bag so the frosting can't come back up and out the top. Keep twisting the bag tighter as you pipe to keep the tension on the frosting. While one hand pipes the frosting, use your other hand to support and keep it steady. Just figure out what's comfortable for you. If you want to add a filling between the layers, you can pipe a little wall of frosting to keep it from spilling out. Becca used a number 12 round tip for this. If your frosting wall is a little flat in places, just add a little more. We added ice cream fudge topping to the middle of this cake and it was so delicious with the pumpkin flavor. Place the top layer on and you're ready to frost the whole thing. If you're not really sure about your frosting skills or you have a very delicate cake, you might want to do a crumb coat. If you're using the chocolate muffins or anything with chunks in it, that'll be easier with a crumb coat too. A crumb coat is when you cover the cake in a thin layer of frosting and it's just enough to glue down all the crumbs to the cake and fill in all the little cracks and crevices. Just follow the shape of the cake and you don't have to worry about the crumbs mixing in or being too careful. Just don't be so rough that you rip the cake. Hold the spatula perpendicular to the cake as you frost the sides. It's more comfortable like that and remember to use either an offset spatula if you have it or the flat side of a butter knife. Now take off the excess and wipe that somewhere where it's not going back into your regular frosting bowl because you don't want the crumbs to mix into that. Throw that in the fridge to get really cold and firm. That's an important step if you're doing a crumb coat. While that's chilling, let's do another one this time without a crumb coat. Before we start covering the cake, here's a good technique for spreading the frosting. When you're frosting, if you go like this and you go till you run out of frosting, look what happens, you get crumbs all over the frosting. Mm -hmm. See the crumbs? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to do that. You want to have enough frosting on there. A little crumb there. You go back and forth. When you stop and when you still have frosting there, and you go back. Mm, good take. Back good and technique. forth, back and forth as you move it, and you lift when you still have frosting there. So you don't nice. want to get crumbs on your frosting. Nice. For this one, we just put frosting in the middle, and then we tried to wipe the extra off, but the cake ripped a little bit. But no problem. Frosting can cover everything. Too much. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh. Let's go. It's little. <laughs> Whatever. That never really happens. Don't do it. Make me look bad. <laughs> it's okay, Becca. Make me look bad. There you go. See, it's just like that. A wants to grab on. Don't do that to me. <laughs> now get a lot of frosting on the cake and swipe your spatula or butter knife back and forth, back and forth as you push it equally over the edge, turning the whole time. This is why it's good to have a lot of extra frosting. It won't all end up on the cake, but it'll make it easier to frost. Now grab even more frosting and smush it into the side of the cake using the same motions back and forth, back and forth, staying inside the frosting. Once you've got the side covered, you want to continue to smush the icing around as you pull it up a little because you want to try to make kind of like a crown on the top edge of the frosting. When you've got a nice crown of frosting, keep your knife straight down and start smoothing the sides as you take off the extra frosting. Don't take any off the top yet. This works best if you make a pass on the cake, wipe the knife on the edge of the frosting bowl, and then wipe your knife with a paper towel so you've got a clean edge to smooth with every time. If you start to see the cake through the frosting, you took a little too much, so just put some more back on in that spot and continue smoothing. Once you've got the sides as smooth as you want, it's time to smooth the top. Hold your spatula horizontally and make a swipe across the top edge from the outside in toward the middle of the cake. Wipe the excess on the bowl, then wipe with a paper towel again. Keep doing that as you turn the cake until you have a nice flat top. Now stick the cake in the fridge until firm because it's easier to transfer it to a different plate when it's not soft and it's easier to decorate. If you need to move the cake, use your spatula to go under the edges then lift it up. For a bigger cake you need something like a bench scraper or two to lift it up. You don't have to pipe stuff to decorate your cake to finish it off. You can use pre-made sugar decorations. There are so many out there and you can just look in the baking or cake aisles of the store. Becca found these cute trees. Just add a blob of frosting and stick stuff on. We were deciding how to decorate these on the fly, so we didn't really think to add the sprinkles while it was still sticky. Since it was already crusted, some just kind of sat on the top and the rest gathered at the bottom, which was kind of perfect because then we didn't have to do a border, and it looks so cute. 
Ah, uh, freaking adorable. Now let's switch gears and do a birthday cake. Add frosting or filling to the middle, then place the top on. Frost it just like before, starting at the top and then going down the sides, using plenty to start with and working on a crown of extra frosting along the top edge. The frosting was a little bit hard to work with because it was a little bit too warm because the room was kind of warm, so we just added a bunch of frosting to the top edge to try and build up that crown all the way around. Like I totally lost track of where the cake is. <laughs> 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 I mean, my gauge like how where those are. Yeah. Since we wanted to put birthday sprinkles, we had to move this cake while it was still soft, which was kind of a pain because it was hard to get off of the spatulas. <laughs> oh, oh, crap. Got a little duck tail there. Get some sprinkles in there, it'll be okay. Add sprinkles to the top edge, and all the ones that fall will just be the bottom border again. Easy. Becca is amazing and was able to fit happy birthday on the top of this tiny cake using a number three round tip. If it was me, I probably would have just written something like, yay, or just drawn balloons or hearts. You can always practice with the frosting on like a plate or a paper towel before you commit to writing on the cake. Use even pressure and push down a little at the end of each line to make sure it sticks down. Add fun rosette swirls to the top. We switched the number 12 round tip that we used before to make the frosting wool to a number 21 open star tip. To switch the metal tips, you just take the plastic ring off, switch the tips, and then replace the ring. Easy peasy. Twist the bag up until the frosting starts to come out, and then squeeze the first little bit out somewhere else, just in case it's crusty or melty or there's an air bubble, and then do like a practice swirl while you're at it. Now start the swirl by pushing the tip down as you squeeze the frosting out, and pull up as you swirl around. Pull up quickly at the end, and stop squeezing the bag to finish it, and make a little point. If one of your little swirly rosettes is a little close to another, you can easily scoot it over with a knife because it's just kind of resting on the sprinkles. Now you can totally leave it like this or you can grab some red candies, we used red lemon heads, and place them on top of each rosette to make it look like cherries, it's so cute! After this cake we frosted a blue one so that Davy could put these little sugar pieces on to make it look like a shark, but I lost the footage for that so you'll just see the pictures of it later. I accidentally broke the top layer of this cake, but all we had to do was just glue it back together with frosting and continue like normal. Oh my goodness! Did you get a chulubu frosting? Can I see your teeth? <laughs> Let's do another Christmas cake! Alright, we got a nice Christmassy yellow inside. Mm -hmm. like yellow snow. That's how you get <laughs> Christmas for yellow. That's how you know it's Christmas. <laughs> I mean, really, if it was holding its shape better and stuff, I wouldn't really need to do as much. That's mm -hmm. <laughs> if it wasn't as warm, okay? That's People will go viral because everyone's like, why does she put so much? <laughs> <laughs> right. We will definitely see where it is once we cut into it, won't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although we might never have to see it if I give it to someone, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. It'd be like, hmm. Where, I don't know, like, you know, I don't know what they'll say. <laughs> they'll say <laughs> what will they say, so Becca? <laughs> nice of her to make this cake for me. That's right. <laughs> to make this frosting tower. <laughs> if you want to go even further and get your cake ultra smooth, you can heat your knife with hot water, wipe it dry, then run it along the frosting. Then you can let it crust a little and smooth it some more with either a piece of paper towel or parchment paper. Now we're going to try and do a wreath. I say we a lot, but really I mean just Becca, because she's the only one doing everything. <laughs> but I support her as I hold the camera. You can shake the bag to get the frosting down to the tip and get the biggest air pockets out, and then you can squish it down and twist the bag and close it to make it tight. Remember that you can always practice before you start, like on a paper towel, and then you just scoop it back into the bag when you're done. We tried a few different looks for the wreath. Looks like a brick. Like a cactus. <laughs> Too. That looks like looks a cactus, like cactus too. <laughs> <laughs> Rosette kind of things, like, mm -hmm. it's like cactuses it's too. It's all looking like I a cactus. I think this would look okay. We decided to pipe shells in a braided pattern. 
To make this shell shape, you just squeeze the frosting out and then pull it towards you to make a tail that points towards you. Start with one and then do the next one a little down and to the side with the tail angling into the middle. The next one goes on the opposite side a little farther down with the tail angling into the middle again, and then you just repeat the pattern on either side back and forth until you get a braid. <laughs> They're definitely little cactus heads. Yeah, they are. <laughs> it's adorable though. It's like a little Texas Christmas wreath. It started to get a little wonky because I think the shells got a little too far apart, but it still looks super cute all together. No! <laughs> Can I get it out without messing it up? Just, oh, I got it. Good. There was an air bubble that caused the break in the line. If this happens to you, don't panic. Just carefully connect the lines with more frosting. Then, while it's still wet, take a toothpick and wiggle it back and forth, back and forth to smooth the transition out until you can't even tell it was there. The joy is so beautifully on theme because it looks like the white has a little lasso. We didn't have time to chill this cake, so moving it to the other plate didn't go very well, but that's okay, we just gotta keep moving. We definitely should have put a little frosting in to fill that dent in the bottom, because the border we used didn't really cover it like we thought it would. Oh my gosh, it looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you can always scrape off the frosting carefully and then try again. Becca did a really cute bead border at the bottom to cover the ragged edges. Make the beads by squeezing while holding in one spot and then pull to the side. It's always better to start at the back of the cake in case it comes out weird or it doesn't quite match in size when you get back to the starting point. Oh no, it looks terrible in your camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take forever. <laughs> Our next cake has these tiny, adorable mini Oreos. Again, not sponsored, but they're just perfect for these tiny cakes. We're bringing back out our fudge-filled pumpkin cake with the creme coat, and it's been thoroughly chilled, which makes it way easier to work with. Take a good handful of the Oreos and crush them in a bowl with like a cup or the handle of a wooden spoon until you have really fine crumbs. Then mix that into some white frosting until it's evenly speckled gray, and it should be very spreadable and smushy still. If it's not, just add a tiny amount of water and mix until it's back to the original consistency. Oreos make the frosting taste so good. Frost it the same, starting with the top and using plenty. This time you don't have to be as careful because the crumb coat stuck everything down and the cake is nice and firm from being chilled. She's like a monster <laughs> at this stage. <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm already done. I already got it all. It runs back to the beginning again. It's a short journey. <laughs> it is been <laughs> around so this much. cake. Yeah. Transfer it to its final destination. Moving it is way easier if you chill it in the fridge. If you stick it in the freezer for 20 to 30 minutes, you can even just peel it right off the paper plate with your hands. To make the chocolate drizzle, we just heated up a small amount of this pre-made chocolate frosting until it was drippy. Put some all along the edge, pushing it over in some spots to help it drip down. Do the whole edge first before you do the middle to make sure you have enough for the drips. And work kind of quickly because the cold cake will solidify the chocolate frosting if you leave it too long. Then smush out the frosting to the middle coming from the outside edge right into the middle. Using the number 21 open star tip, pipe a white swirly rosette. We made these a little beefier than the birthday cake by piping in a bigger circle at the base, then swirling up. Add another on the opposite side, then two in between on either side. Ah! No, it looks good, <laughs> Becca. Grab it a little bit and we'll just go. Come here, come here, come here, come here. It helps if you shush it. <laughs> See, no problem. Doesn't have to be perfect to be stinking cute and worth your time. Let me just stick it right. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. So cute. That ah! <laughs> This is my childhood Christmas stocking, by the way. There were 10 of us kids, and my mom made each of us a stocking when we were born. You can kind of see them way up above the fireplace in this photo. I think the big kids had just hung them up.
One year I left candy in it and it got packed away and some mice or moths or something ate it to pieces. So my mom cut out the decorations and made me a new one with the old decorations. I love it. And now we hang up our own set of stockings, one for each kid, also made by my mom. Thanks for watching my video. Check my blog goodenoughandstuff.com for more recipes and tutorials. Um, I will leave a link below. If you are looking for more Christmas decorating, cookie baking videos, then you can check out my cookie playlist. I know this is after Christmas that I'm posting this, but I'm early for next year. So I hope you had a good Christmas time and that you will have a good New Year's. And I will see you next time. Bye. It's just like so thick. <laughs> yep. Okay, what else do you want me to do? Do you want me to be yellow or brown? Wait, wait, we gotta get some. What color do you want to put on top of your decorations? What color on top? Yellow? Brown. And then they take more better. Yay! <laughs> it tastes great. <laughs> oh, I just stand like this usually. Do you just love it? Yeah. And it says, Davy. And Dad on the bottom. It says Dad on the bottom? <laughs> it says us actually. Oh, it says all our names? Yeah. Here. Your name is Cheesecake? You can take a bite. Oh, he dropped it on my dress instead. <laughs>